After teasing the first hot fire test of its Navi engine in December, French lawn startup Latitude has announced the completion of its first hot fire test campaign and released some stunning footage. CEO and co-founder Stanis Maximin joins me on the move in a train from the second day of the European Space Conference to discuss the campaign more. Stan, thank you for joining me and congratulations on the test. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure always, uh, Andrew, to uh, be able to you know, uh, discuss uh, our recent achievements. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry to be, uh, you know, uh, the, the schedule is tight. Uh, spent two days in Brussels uh, for the European Space Conference, but, uh, you know, uh, always uh, here to be able to share uh, what we've done recently. So, yeah. So can you discuss the different elements of the campaign uh, and what you had to go through? I'm guessing you had to do a, a few tests before the hot fire test. Absolutely. So it was um, it was quite uh, a challenge, to be honest, because we have to go back, uh, not in time, but uh, we have to go back in the, I'm sorry, perhaps there's uh, a lot of noise in the background. I tried to get into the train as soon as possible. Um, so we had a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, problems <laughs> for the whole campaign. Because basically, the engine has been ready for like May 22, June 22. Um, so it was a while ago. Uh, we received multiple engines uh, made by our, by our partner, uh, such on technology uh, in Luxembourg. And uh, we had to find, a, you know, some place to test it. Um, normally, we are, I mean, not normally, we have been granted um, um, like a free um, uh, uh, campaign, yeah, test campaign uh, from CNES that had to be led uh, in uh, uh, IN Group's Vernon facilities, uh, where all the most of the engines uh, are tested in Europe. Um, they were supposed to also build uh, the own, uh, like our own test bench. I mean, a test bench that could be shared, but you know, a dedicated test benches. A test bench for um, um, uh, startups and, and, and micro launchers. Uh, but it's for many, many reasons, uh, it was not feasible for us to uh, be on time. We were supposed to just, you know, go there with our engine in May, June 22. Finally, they were absolutely not ready at that time. So we tried, at the same time, we launched um, our own like test bench program uh, to develop our, uh, our own um, capability of testing and also testing on the go, because that was one of the, uh, one of the objectives, you know, uh, if we have to go to Vernon and then perhaps to other place, we would be able to move the whole, uh, the whole bench uh, to uh, perhaps another place. So we developed it. Um, I think, it, yeah, it started when we started uh, assembling the different parts in like, I don't want to say, I think it's June, June or July 22. We had discussions with Iron Group to bring the bench in Vernon. It, Finally, was not possible for multiple reasons, uh, um, but it was uh, also quite a problem um, for us. And as we did not had you know the luxury of uh, being delayed, uh, it's not in our culture. We decided to uh, move on with another um, um, area. So um, yeah, and we decided to call our uh, trusted launch partner, uh, Zach Savord. Uh, and you know the guys were phenomenal. I think in in a few days they said. Hmm, yeah, I think we can do it. I think we have like a special zone, a former uh, air airport, uh, where we can uh, actually bring you guys. We did not really believe it, to be honest. I, I think I was quite uh, thorough with my team, saying them, you know, it's not because they say we can that we can. And uh, so, so, so we spent a, a lot of time, you know, figuring that out. But actually, it was possible. They were incredibly serious, incredibly um, uh, prepared. So they had like a former, uh, not air base, but like more uh, small, small airport um, that was abandoned. Uh, but we just needed, you know, the concrete and electricity basically and water. Um, so yeah, we had that discussions. I think we closed uh, the deal uh, quite rapidly once, you know, Vernon was not lo no longer a possibility. I think we even closed before. Vernon was definitely no longer a possibility to be honest. Um, but yeah, so we decided to go there and, and then it was, uh, you know, um, uh, really race uh, to be able to finish the test bench in a record time. I think it too, uh, it's simple. The test bench left the factory the 30th of September. Exactly. I know. I know the date when it left. Uh, I don't know exactly when we started. To, you know, to, to receive the first uh, the first parts, but it was incredibly uh, like I mean two three months, uh, th three to four months maybe, uh, not much. And it's 
like a real one. You know, it's not just testing a rocket engine and, and just firing that up. No, no, it's a test bench that is uh, uh, capable of holding multiple uh, tens of seconds, uh, even more um, minutes of hot firing that can also uh, connect with high pressure um, uh, rocket tanks, uh, well, and pressurized tanks that can connect with uh, huge ground turbo pumps uh, and also be safe and gather all the data necessary for the, uh, because we don't just don't want to test a rocket engine to test a rocket engine. We want to know exactly what happens inside, exactly what happens outside the engine, the impact that it has and that it will have on other engines and, and the whole structure of the rocket. And, and, and yeah, it was uh, a lot of work um, in every department. And I mean, I think it was the biggest project we've ever done. Uh, it cost us way more than the development of the engine. Uh, in terms of time, in terms of engineers, in terms of cost, sure cost, but we had incredible uh, partners that helped us. Um, you know, I will not cite every one of them. Uh, there are so many. Um, <clears throat> we um, then, you know, we finished the test bench, which was, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we worked six days uh, per week, um, uh, long hours. It was really, uh, uh, it was an investment, a human uh, investment. Um, that can only come from you know a team that does not want to uh, to let things uh, not go their way, uh, and so we pushed. And and when the the, the test bench was uh, finished, we sent it directly to uh, the Shetlands, which was not so much a logistical nightmare to be honest, but it's still quite hard because you know we had to go from Rhin to Dunkerque, Dunkerque to uh, uh, Dover, Dover I think it was Dover, Dover to. Uh, all the way up there um, in Scotland and then take another ferry uh, to go to uh, the first island, then I take two more ferries. I mean, it, it was quite quite hard, but it, it, you know, in one week, uh, the uh, container and the, I mean, the, the whole test bench and the whole facilities were uh, delivered. And so we, we sent our first team and we began working on reassembling the test bench um, in Saxavord. Um, I mean, in the island, sorry, the island of Unst, and um, and it, it took us a while as well. Uh, I mean, it was the first time we did something that big. We needed to operate safely, reliably. Um, um, the test bench, which is the main, uh, like the number one priority, and and it took a while. Um, the conditions, as you may know, are not that easy uh, up there. We are um, very close. Uh, uh, to the pole, I mean, way closer than any other uh, point in Europe. Uh, we are, uh, you know, it's like 70 kilometers per hour of wind. Um, it rains almost every day uh, and it rains horizontally. Um, and it, it also uh, uh, snowed a bit. Uh, we had two, uh, two times during the three, four months of operations when the whole, the whole island lost um, electricity and, and communication with the rest of the world. So, you know, it's, uh, it's space. Uh, we have, uh, we had some, uh, we, we all, of course, had some, some challenges, but we went through. Um, and so it took like two, two, two months to, 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 put the, uh, to start the first test. Uh, first test was testing the engine, uh, like water, uh, water test um, to, uh, to uh, well, to, to see how, how it works all. Uh, how the, um, the pressure, the pre uh, sorry, the pressure system works. Uh, the engine, of course, uh, works. Do we have any leak? <laughs> That's important to know. Um, so it went good. Uh, we, we gathered a lot of uh, information from that. We have also to know because this is this, this permits us to adapt the um, um, uh, mixture ratio and, and many other uh, things. So so. Uh, we did that. Then we uh, configured the, the the bench for hot fire tests, and we hot fired the engine before Christmas. I don't remember exactly the date, to be honest. I think it was 19th January. I'm I'm not 100% sure, but either that or the 21st. So I don't remember exactly. Um, we um, so we did that. Uh, we had a problem during that, not a big one, uh, but we had a problem. So the engine fired. Uh, it fired for like, I think it was 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds. Uh, it fired. We had, um, uh, we had small problems and small tweaks to do on the engines uh, that required some work. So we spent then the, um, two weeks uh, during Christmas and New Year's Eve 
uh, with, the, with the support of the uh, locals. Um, we found the one guy who can, uh, uh, who can do some uh, special operations on such pieces and, and, and it helped a lot. And we modified the second engine that we had. Um, and then we test fired on the 4th of January uh, three times in like a five or six hour uh, span of time, um, the engine. And one test fire was like um, three seconds, the other 10. Um, and then we went for the full uh, test, the full test that our test bench can permit under that con uh, configuration, which was 35 seconds. Um, and that's what we did. And it worked perfectly. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I, I mean, I quite like also racing and, and you often say uh, to a race car that it's, you know, uh, it was born correctly, you know, it, it, it has some natural advantages. Um, of course, we have to do some tweaks, but the engine is, is quite, uh, you know, it's, it's born to be, uh, to be a good engine. Um, we have the performances. Uh, we had a small problem uh, with the whole regenerative uh, system. It works, it cools down the engine, no problem, but uh, we could not um, attain uh, due to combination of the test bench and the engine could not attain 100% of thrust. Uh, but we are modifying that uh, as I speak to you, and uh, we'll test in, a, in next April um, uh, the engine at 100% uh, of thrust. But uh, but we did test the engine; um, it works quite well, uh, better than we hoped. We validated a lot of technologies, um, like uh, our injection system, which is quite unique. We validated also um, the igniter, which is quite unique as well. And we also validated that the igniter can be reignited multiple times without any maintenance that it does not take any damage from um from the um from the engine firing so it's uh, yeah it's, it's incredible and, and we can fire it multiple times so yeah it's honestly uh, it's better than we could hope i think um now you know uh we we, we took some days off and uh, i mean the team took some days off because i left them a bit before but uh and now you know it's uh uh, head down and uh, we modify the uh, small tweaks, the small problems that we have that I think we found out that like 80% of all the problems are now, we, we know exactly what happened and you, we know it's not a pain in the ass to, to modify. So, so we'll modify it and, you know, we are ready to, um, to do the fi next and final test campaign of this engine um, to validate the design of the flight engine. So it was long, I know, but Generally, uh, it went extremely well.